The ACC and the Pac-12 are discussing a loose partnership. And I'll go ahead and bring up the article on the screen here from Dennis Dodd. He said both conferences, along with the Big 12, are aiming to fortify their membership and increase their media rights revenue. Now, he brings up a championship game in Las Vegas. I have yet to see anybody discuss what this championship game would look like. Would this be an additional you know, 14th game before you get to a college football playoff. Now, remember, the playoff does not exist after 2025. Once all this stuff kind of goes into motion, there's there's nothing on the books for them. And if they don't all agree on something, which it wouldn't necessarily make sense for the SEC or the Big Ten to expand this thing at this point, if unless there's going to be a lot more money and Thus, they can get more teams in, right? So you wouldn't have any of these AQ bits. You would not have any autonomy for the Pac-12, the ACC, or the Big 12. Uh, they really should assign that thing. I mean, we can talk about it. That Wetzel and, uh, and Forty talk about it uh, multiple times on their podcast over the past week, but it, Wetzel keeps saying, you dumbasses. That, it's the truth. Uh, you should have signed this thing. You should have gotten it locked in because now... The big dogs at the table don't have to include you in anything. It it could just be an SEC versus Big Ten championship, and that's it. Uh, but as far as this ACC Pac-12 loose partnership, and basically somebody somebody has already deemed it the Alliance Coast Conference. Uh, George Klyovkov, the commissioner of the Pac-12, and of course Jim Phillips, the commissioner of the ACC, have been discussing multiple different options on how to, quote-unquote, fortify their memberships, make sure that the teams don't leave, and to hopefully get them a little bit more revenue. And that championship game would do so. We already talked, and the ACC discussed multiple times about uh, player safety and things that are best for the sport and best for the student-athletes, and that involved NIL, etc. Right? There were a lot of things that Phillips brought up when he announced that the Alliance was going to vote against the playoff expansion. There's things that we got to take care of before we move to that. Okay, um, there are, but if you're going to be adding an extra game just for money in this situation, uh, that kind of seems like you're taking advantage of the situation. Kind of seems like you're taking advantage of the student-athletes. So I'm curious what that would look like. Now, the other side of this, why would ESPN do this? Uh, I mean, I, I can understand you're wanting to basically take control of both of those conferences, and if you're going after the Big 12, you can take you can take control of all of college football outside of the Big 10. That could be interesting if you are willing to pay that kind of money. But would this open up some leeway to where the ACC grant of rights for all of those schools is no longer valid? If you do that, how many of those schools reach out to some of these bigger conferences? Uh, and we'll, obviously, there's a tweet that went around today that we'll, we'll hit on. But, uh, but yeah, the other part of this was repurposing the ACC network, which has obviously not done incredibly well upon its arrival last, uh, maybe 2020, I guess it was, or maybe uh, it must have, been, must have been last season. Regardless, that is, I guess it was 2019. Whenever it came out, it still has not done incredibly well. It wasn't picked up on a lot of cable subscribers. There's still a lot of people that cannot get the ACC network. There are, however, more people that can get the ACC network than can get the Pac-12 network. Now, the Pac-12 network is going to go away. Klyovkov has made that very, very clear that they are going to be selling their rights. It's not going to be where they keep a lot of them in-house the way that Larry Scott tried to do. If they repurpose the ACC network, what does that mean for the ACC's grant of rights? When you start changing up things in the contract, does that open up holes for some of these bigger brands, whether it be Clemson, Florida State, North Carolina, uh, whoever, to reach out to the SEC or the Big Ten? If you start changing things around with this, does it change that? The other part of this, John Wilner, of course, uh, I mean, he's he's Mr. Pac-12 everything. Like, he, he just knows everything. He tweeted out, In the days since the hotline first floated a Pac-12 ACC partnership, I have become more convinced it can work. Stability limits the Big 12, enough revenue to satisfy each, maybe, 
and presidential alignment. I, I can see it, maybe. I can, I can somewhat understand where he's coming from, but I think that this one that he did not long after makes a little bit more sense. He tweeted, My conjecture, is there a third door being explored by ESPN? Instead of the Pac-12 ACC partnership or Pac-12 schools going to the Big 12, what if they split them up? The four corners, that's the Arizona schools, Utah and Colorado, going to the, uh, to the Big 12, and then Oregon, Washington, and the Bay Area schools to the ACC. It says, crazy, maybe, but this feels destined to land outside the box. He said, and if the ACC plays eight conference games, each West Coast team would play three versus each other, limiting five uh, the number of cross-country matchups, three on the road one year, two the next. So it does limit the travel. It does make it a little bit easier if you were going to do that. If if ESPN were interested in that, they you have to remember, they ESPN already has a fantastic, incredibly advantageous contract with the ACC. Is it worth it to go get those other brands in Oregon, Oregon State, Washington, Washington State, Stanford, and Cal to come over and play ACC schools and then send the other ones across the country the same way. Does it make sense for them? And I might would say yes. That might would make sense. Because at that point, you can renegotiate both of these really at the same time. You effectively break up the Pac-12. You've got Utah and Colorado, which were not initial members anyway, Arizona and Arizona State, which I think fit more culturally with the Big 12 anyway. Move those schools into the Big 12, and then the other ones that are in the uh, in the Pacific Northwest, move all of those, and of course the, uh, the Bay Area schools, move them over to the ACC. So yes, it's cross-country, but as we've seen with UCA, uh, UCLA and USC moving to the Big 10, none of that necessarily matters anymore. But if you package six of them together and send them over to the ACC, I mean, you're up to 20 schools at that point. I think Notre Dame is a pipe dream for the ACC at this point. Do you just get rid of the Notre Dame contract? Do you, I mean, what do you end up doing? And if you stay at at eight conference games, you can still do Notre Dame, but now you can do Notre Dame with Oregon, Notre Dame against Washington, Notre Dame against, and you've already got Notre Dame and Stanford. Uh, but there are other games, other matchups that could be worth money to that conference overall. So could the ACC end up being the first 20-team conference? Because the ACC is already at 14. You you bump them up to 20. Again, you do that and you have to, you might have to reopen that grant of rights. Do you want to do that? But maybe you do if it's worth it to take control of the entire college football landscape as far as the the big brands outside of the Big Ten. Like maybe ESPN holds court with everything. The Big 12 contract, the Pac-12 contract, which, take that back, the Big 12, the ACC, uh, the SEC. Maybe that makes sense. Now, I'm not entirely certain, but, I mean, we shall see. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.